Welcome back to the channel. My name is Yaniv Hoffman. In military theory, warfare is typically divided to three levels. Tactics, operations, and strategy. Each one of these three levels give you a different perspective into the art of war. When it comes to the art of cyber, it's no different. If you want to learn something like hacking, it's easy to stay on the tactic level around the tools, commands, and techniques. Yet, you will probably miss the bigger picture, and because of it, might miss the target itself. Therefore, today, we will speak about the cyber kill chain, its stages and strategy. Developed by Lockheed Martin, the Cyber Kill Chain Framework is part of the model of identification and prevention of cyber intrusions activity. The model identifies what the adversary must compare in order to achieve their objective. It all started in 2011 by computer scientists at Lockheed Martin Corporation that described the new intrusion kill chain framework or model to defend computer networks. They wrote that attacks may occur in phases and can be disrupted to controls established at each phase. According to Lockheed Martin framework, cyber kill chain reveals the phases of a cyber attack, from early reconnaissance to the goal of data exploitation. The kill chain can also be used as a management tool to help continuously improve network defenses. According to Lockheed Martin, threats must progress through several phases in the model. Reconnaissance, when intruder selects the target, reaches it, and attempts to identify vulnerabilities in the target network. Weaponization, when intruder creates a remote access malware weapon, such as a virus or worm, tailored to one or more vulnerabilities. Delivery, when intruder transmits weapons to target, in example, via email attachment, website, or USB driver. Exploitation, malware weapons program code triggers, which takes action on target network to exploit vulnerability. Installation, which is malware weapon installs access point, example like is a backdoor, usable by intruder. Command and control, malware enables intruder to have ends on the keyboard, persistent access to target network. And last but not least, actions on the objectives, where intruder takes the action to achieve their goals, such as data retrieval, data destruction, or encryption for ransomware. Defensive courses of action can be taken against these phases. First is detect, determine whether an intruder is present. Second is deny, prevent information disclosure and unauthorized access. Third is disrupt, stop or change outbound traffic to the attacker. Fourth is degrade, counterattack command and control. Fifth is decide, interfere with command and control. And last but not least, contain, which is network segmentation change. But let's dive in more thoroughly to the seven stages. See what the adversaries are doing and how the defenders can protect against it. So we said the first stage is reconnaissance, where you identify the target. And the adversary here are in the planning phase of their operation. They conduct research to understand which targets will enable them to meet their objective. They harvest email addresses, they identify employees on social media network. They collect press releases, contract awards, conferences, attendees list, etc. They discover internet facing servers. The defenders on the other side needs to detect their reconnaissance as soon as possible, otherwise it will be very difficult. But when the defenders discover the reconnaissance, even well after the fact, it can reveal the intent of the adversaries. The defenders on the other side need 
to collect website visitor logs for alerting and historical searching, collaborate with web administrator and utilize their existing browser analytics, build detections for browsing behaviors unique to reconnaissance, prioritize defenses around the technologies of people based on reconnectivity. The second stage is weaponization, how they prepare the operation. And adversaries are in the preparation and staging phase. Malware operation is likely not done by hand and they use automated tools. A weaponized couples of malwares and exploits into a deliverable payload. And what usually they do, they obtain a weaponized in their in-house or obtained through public or private channel. For file-based exploits, they select a decoy document to present to the victim. They also select a backdoor, implement an appropriate command and control infrastructure for operation. They designated a specific mission ID and embed it into the malware. And last but not least, they compile the backdoor and weaponized in the payload itself. The defender on the other side is in essential phase to understand. Trough they cannot detect weaponization when it happens, they can infer by analyzing malware artifacts. Detection against weaponized artifacts are often the most durable and resilient defenses. And what they need to do? They need to conduct a full malware analysis, not just what payload it drops, but how it was made. They need to build detections for weaponized, find new campaigns and new payloads only because they are reused by a weaponized toolkit. Analyze timeline of when malware was created relatively to when it was used. Old malware is malware off the shelf, but new malware might mean an active tailored operation. They need to collect files and metadata for future analysis, and they need to determine which weaponized artifacts are common to which APT campaigns. Are they widely shared or closely held? Third stage is delivery, where the attackers are launching the operation. So the adversaries convey the malware to the target now. They've launched their operations. So what exactly do they do? So the adversary control the delivery, direct against the web servers. And then they release the malicious mail, either on a USB stick or social media interactions, the defenders on the other end, this is the first and most important opportunity for defenders to block the operations. A key measure of effectiveness is the fraction of intrusion attempts that are blocked at delivery stage. And to do so, they need to analyze delivery medium, understand the upstream infrastructure, understand the target servers and people, their roles and responsibility, what information is available, infer intent of adversaries based on targeting, leverage weaponizers, artifacts, to detect new malicious payloads at the point of delivery, analyze time of day of when operations begin, collect email and web logs for forensic reconstruction. Even if an intrusion is detected late, defenders must be able to determine when and how delivery begins. The fourth stage is exploitation, where you gain access to victim. Now, the adversaries must exploit a vulnerability to gain access, right? The first zero days refers to the exploit code used in just these steps. So software, hardware, or human vulnerability. Acquire or develop zero-day exploit where adversary triggers exploits. Server-based vulnerabilities, victim triggers exploits. Opening attachment of malicious emails, click malicious link, where the defenders here needs to do a traditional ordering measures and resiliency. But custom capabilities are necessary to stop a zero-day exploit at this stage. User awareness, training, and email testing for employees is required. Secure coding training for web developers. 
regular vulnerability scanning and penetration stand, uh, testing, endpoint ordering measures like restrict admin privileges, use Microsoft email, custom endpoint rules to block uh, shell code execution, and last but not least, endpoint process auditing to forensically determine origin of exploit. The fifth stage is installation, where you try to establish a beachhead at the victim. Now, typically the adversaries install the persistent backdoor or implement in the victim environment to maintain access for an extended period of time. So they install a web shell on the web server, they install a backdoor to implement on client victims, they create a point of persistency by adding services like outrun keys, etc. And some adversaries timestamp the file to make malware appear, it is part of the standard operating system installed. On the Defender side, endpoint instrumentation to detect and log installation activity, analyze installation phase during malware analysis to create new endpoint mitigations. And here a few items. Hips to alert or block on common installation paths, in example Recycler, Understand if malware requires administrator privileges or only user. Endpoint process auditing to discover abnormal file creations. Extract certifications of any signed executables. And understand compile time of malware to determine if it is old or new. The sixth stage is command and control. And that is where remotely control the implants. So the adversary uses the malware that opens the command channel to enable the remote manipulations to the victims. So they use a two-way communication channel to the command and control infrastructure. And most common command and control channels are over web, DNS, and email protocols. Now the command and control infrastructure may be adversary owned or another victim network itself. The defenders last best chance to block the operation by blocking the command and control channels. If the adversary cannot issue commands, defenders can prevent the impact, right? So it's very important to discover the command and control infrastructure through malware analysis. So you need to harden your network by consolidating number of internet points of presence. Require proxies for all types of traffic like HTTP and DNS. Customize block of command and control protocols to web proxies. Proxy category to block including none or uncategorized domains. DNS syncs, alling and name server poisoning and conduct open source research to discover new adversary command and control infrastructure. Last but not least is actions on the objectives. And here it's to achieve the mission goal, where the adversaries with end zone on the keyboard access, intrudes, accomplish the mission goal. What happens next depends on who is on the keyboard. And they collect the user credential, they can collect privilege escalations, internal reconnaissance, lateral movement of environment, collect exliferate data, they can destroy the system, overwrite or corrupt uh, data, etc. From the defender side, the longer an adversary has the command and control access, the greater the impact. Defenders must detect this stage as quickly as possible by using forensic evidence, including network packet captures for damage assessment. And the goal is to establish incident response playbook, including executive engagement and communication plan. Detect the data exclarification point, lateral movement, unauthorized credential usage. Immediate analysis response to all command and control alerts. Forensic agents pre-deployed to endpoints for rapid triage. Network package captures to recreate the activity. Conduct damage assessments and subject matter experts. Now it's important to understand, even if all of these stages that the adversaries are trying to make, 
just one mitigation breaks the entire chain. So the defenders has the advantage with the cyber kill chain solution. All seven steps must be successful for a cyber attack to occur. So the defender has seven opportunities to break the chain. Conclusion, the defender can have the advantages. Better communicate and mitigate risk, build true resilience, meaningful measures, result, getting started, remember that there is no such a thing as secure, only defendable. Start by thinking differently when you make changes to your processes, investments, metrics, communications with your team and leadership, staffing models and architecture, and know your threats. It's not just about network defenses anymore. It's about defending much more like your platform and mobile users. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was insightful for you and hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.